Thank you for tuning in to Belmont Journal. I'm Eleanor Dash. We've got a Belmont Town election on April 2nd in which there are three, school, three candidates in a race for two school committee seats. Joining us today is one of the candidates, newcomer Matt Kraft. Welcome, Matt. Thanks for having me. Of course. Well, first off, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your family? I'm originally from St. Louis, Missouri, where I grew up. I moved out west to go to college at Stanford University, where I met my wife. And we have two kids, a fourth grader and a first grader. My favorite things to do are to spend time with my family, play sports, watch sports, get outside, go on hikes. And it's just a joy to be a dad. So I guess what brought you to Belmont and how long have you lived here? I originally moved out east in 2008 to pursue my doctorate at Harvard University in quantitative policy analysis and education. And uh, my wife and I lived in Cambridge until our second kid was coming along and we needed a bigger place and more space to run around. And as a researcher, I spent a lot of time studying different public school districts in the greater Boston area. And we very purposely chose to move to Belmont almost eight years ago uh, because of the close-knit community and the excellent schools. So how have you served Belmont over these years that you've been living here so far? As a dad and a parent, I volunteered in my kids' elementary school, both for events like Light Up the Night and in the library, reading to the, my kids' class during their birthdays. But I've also served the district uh, during one of the most challenging years we've had uh, in the wake of COVID. I stepped up to take part in the return to in-person uh, working group where we helped this district to navigate a safe and uh, effective re-entry into the classroom. And I also serve as a volunteer soccer coach for both of my kiddos' soccer teams, which is so much fun. I'm sure I was a player myself. So awesome. Why'd you decide to run for school committee? I decided to run for school committee for three main reasons. I believe deeply in the importance of public education. I see it as the cornerstone for creating opportunity and uh, for establishing our democratic society. I'm also deeply committed to Belmont schools as a dad to two young kids who attend the schools here and who will be attending these schools for the next decade. And finally, I want to serve the town that I love. And there's an open seat on the school committee. And I believe I have the experience and insight and the commitment necessary to make a difference and help us to move forward. So what experience do you have that you think makes you a good fit for this role in the school committee spot? I've dedicated my entire career to improving public schools, both as a classroom teacher and as a professor. And I think it's particularly important that I bring training in economics as an economist of education to help us to navigate the challenging circumstances we face. I have a deep understanding of public education finance and the analytical tools to weigh difficult trade-offs and make uh, critical and strategic budget decisions. Uh, but I also bring with me an understanding of what it's like to be inside the classroom as a teacher and how policies and budgets impact educators. That combination of skills, I think, will help me to serve the town and improve the quality of instruction we can provide for all students. All right, so if elected, what would your top priorities be during the three-year term? The three -year term? I think a critical first priority and opportunity is to establish what we want our vision to be 
for Belmont Public Schools and then to deliver on that vision. We have a new district leadership and an opportunity to reassess and reevaluate where we are and decide how we can best align our budget and our policies towards an ambitious and sustainable vision for our schools. I also see the need to invest in our curriculum to uh, improve and align our literacy instructional materials and approaches with the science of reading and with uh, proven research-based approaches, as well as to update our math curriculum and instructional materials in the middle and the high school. And finally, I think we have to really focus on supporting and uh, retaining our best educators. We are a town that has benefited from an incredibly talented teacher workforce and uh, dedicated uh, educators. But this is a challenging moment when the um, Uncertainty of the override creates um, motivation for educators to look at more stable opportunities in work environments. And we need to do everything we can to make sure that they continue to call Belmont their, Belmont their home and that we attract the next generation of, of excellent educators. Speaking of the override question, which will be on the town election ballot as well, what is your current stance on that? I'm a strong supporter of the override, both as a dad and as a candidate for school committee. I think that the override is an important investment in our community and that all residents will benefit it from it, both from uh, improved services on the municipal side as well as uh, stronger and better services in our public schools. I also think we have to recognize that we can't sustain the rapidly increasing rate of um, growth in our school budget that we've experienced in the last couple of years and that we need to commit ourselves to finding efficiencies and making sure that we don't continue over the long run to place an undue burden on taxpayers. All right, so if the override doesn't pass and you are elected, what will you do to ensure students aren't negatively affected by this lack of funds? I think we should be honest with ourselves that if the override does not pass, there are a lot of things we can do, but we will not be able to completely protect students from the cuts in services that will be necessary. And so if I'm elected, I'm committed to serving in the best way that I can with the override or without it. If we do not have those funds, then I will work tireless, tirelessly to make sure that we go line by line through our 200 page budget to find efficiencies to make sure that the cuts that we do make are at arm's length from uh, students lived experiences inside of schools and that we also think more creatively not just about cuts but how can we increase revenues we have an opportunity with for example aggressively pursuing state and federal grants to try to supplement our budget to take advantage of our new facilities that in some places aren't being fully used to least those facilities to organizations and programs that we think would be great partners and well aligned to our school values. And I think we have to take a, a look at opportunities to potentially increase revenues um, around fees in a way that is also reasonable for our community and uh, addresses the needs of those families who couldn't meet those increased costs to make sure everyone has access to extracurricular uh, in sports. All right, so how do you think Belmont Schools can reduce its spending to prevent the need for future overrides? I think there's no doubt that we have to 
bend the cost curve. We need to find ways to make sure that we both provide an excellent education and we grow within our means. And in order to do that, I think we need to find ways to reduce the rapidly uh, increasing out of district costs for special education. And I think we can do that in a way that provides families opportunity to stay in district and receive even better services. And that's gonna be a process. But I think we can look towards um, in district programs that are focused on uh, language skills and uh, uh, helping students who struggle with dyslexia, uh, with a, a therapeutic program focused on students who have uh, challenges with depression and anxiety or behavioral challenges. And that in doing so, we can both reduce those costs and realize the opportunity to provide better services. I think we also have to think incredibly carefully about every new hire that we make and ask ourselves, can that position be possibly integrated into existing um, positions? And is the person we're hiring the absolute best person that will make that investment worth the money that we are putting into it? So what do you think is the most kind of pressing problems the school committee is currently facing? I think the biggest problem is a problem that's not unique to Belmont. It's inherent in the challenge of change in public education. And that challenge is just inertia. Public education is a large, uh, in our case, almost 70 million dollar organization that is um, highly complex, has a lot of moving parts, and is difficult to, to change. And I think we need to be willing to say the status quo isn't good enough. We have a lot of strengths and a lot to build on, but it's the easy thing to do to just continue in the ways that we've always operated. Because change is hard. And I think we have a huge opportunity to commit towards uh, a future where we provide excellent education that meets all individual students' needs. And in particular, to, to do that in a way by looking for operational efficiencies and to improve that, that effectiveness of how we support our schools and our educators at the district level and, and focus on a more uh, strategic set of investments. So what other issues kind of related to just the Belmont Public Schools in itself concern you? I think there's a huge range of ways in which we can continue to strengthen our schools. And, and just going around and talking to residents, uh, knocking on doors, I, I've heard so many amazing things about our schools and uh, ideas for ways in which they can improve. I think there's no doubt that we need to think about ways in which we're supporting our fourth graders uh, who are gonna join the Chinnery Upper Elementary about how to successfully make that transition to a very new school environment. And how do we help to make sure that our teachers want to continue to stay here and it's sustainable that they are able to be successful and that they have the supports they need to focus on instruction. I think we need to make sure that we have enough time during the day for all our young students to go outside and enjoy recess and to play and to be kids. And that we should seriously consider efforts to recommit to our world language program at the Q so that we start helping our students to become multilingual learners earlier in their educational careers. And that we really invest in building stronger, better, more efficient, more transparent communication systems with parents so they can access information about um, how their students are doing and what 
is happening in our schools and how they can communicate with teachers so that they can be actively involved in supporting our schools. So how do you think that you can help make these things that you mentioned better in the public school system? I think that I will be able to help Belmont Public Schools become a learning organization. And what I mean by that is that we will constantly ask, how can we improve? What can we do better? Let's try something new. Let's pilot test a new program. And not just try it, but evaluate it. Did it work? How did it work? Using data, bringing in community voice, and then engaging in those cycles of continuous improvement. I think if we commit ourselves collectively to saying we know we can improve and we're going to be smart about how we do that by making strategic investments and then saying what was the return on those investments that we can move forward and improve the quality of education for all students. Excellent. Well, Matt, as we get to the end of this interview, why should someone vote for you on April 2nd? Thanks for asking, Eleanor. This is a pivotal moment for Belmont schools as we move forward under new leadership. We need a school committee that will take a proactive role in developing and delivering on an ambitious and sustainable vision for our schools. I'm running for school committee because I am deeply committed to Belmont schools and see their potential to become a leading example of educational excellence for all students. I am invested in this work for the long run as a dad of two young kids attending Belmont schools and as someone who has dedicated his career to improving public education. As an economist of education, I have a deep understanding of public education finance and the analytical skills necessary to make strategic budget decisions. I will take an evidence-based approach and always remain open to diverse perspectives. My 20 plus years studying K-12 education policy and working in public schools gives me the experience to know what is possible and how to achieve it. Let's work together to ensure all students are supported to succeed while getting the most out of every dollar we spend. Thank you. Well, Matt, it was a pleasure getting to know you better today. And for everyone watching, the town election is April 2nd. Thank you for tuning into the Belmont Journal, and until next time.